current. Really taking off. Uh, probably get a couple more of them. Uh, all the brown gook is off, or has been cleaned off of the um, Anubius leaves by the algae leaves. Um, and now I have some challenges with uh, green spot algae and the um, strands of brown long strands of brown algae. Not sure if you can see it, you can see it there. And it basically has to do with the amount of nutrients in the water is my belief. And there's some more happening is the discus, which is on the back right now, will only, uh, first of all, the other two died. Um, I should have ordered all five of them, but I'll show you. This one took out, one of them arrived in a shaky condition, and then this one, I think, took out the other one. it from eating and things like that so my goal is to have about five or seven in this tank and then weed out some of the catches um, like this one right here having to grow a new tail um, and I like to have five or seven discus and then maybe two or three schooling of fish. Uh, we'll see how they hold up in the tank. Uh, so the capacity to be able to handle. Adding more. I'm not running carbon or any type of purgin or phosphate remover. Um, I haven't had the need to up until now, and I'm going to have to because in order, the discus will only eat bloodworms, and then majority of the fish are eating the pellets, except for the glass fin tetras. They're only eating. Um, like mysis or um, brine shrimp, frozen. So I'm polluting a lot of the tank water every time I feed because my primary goal is to feed heavily for him. And then, of course, the other ones fight him for the food. I'll show you a video of that in a future uh, episode. But that's pretty much what's going on right now with this tank. Switching my focus to obtaining more discus and then weeding out and moving some of the tetras um, that are struggling in the tank back to the quarantine tank. Um, I've got one that has. This nose thing, I don't know if that's, where is he? Right there. Weeding heart tetra, that one has that thing on its nose. So there's things like that. A few here and there are. Um, the diamond tetra in the back has a little fin rot. So I'll be pulling some of the individual tetras out. As far as plants, um, I definitely want some more of the hammer leaf. My, I have two, I believe they're called crimin strata. This, this one right here next to the java fern, and then there's another one uh, back there. And I've been trying to grow one back in that open space, and for some reason, 
it keeps dying there. I've had two that died in that area, so what I may do is um, I have an extra bag of the Aquasol, and I may try and add some of that to the tank, especially back there uh, where a lot of these uh, red um, chips start. In, I think majority of it is concentrated in the center, so. Uh, definitely want one more mother size Java fern plant. And at least uh, two or three more on the hammer leaf. And once my water quality gets better, I won't have so many challenges with the Madagascar lace, but right now, heavy feeding. Um, Coming into another challenging allergy phase for the tank. You can see right there, there's those brown long strands. And uh, I've been keeping an eye on the parameters. Um, no ammonia spike whatsoever. Um, the filtration system is easily handling the. Um, Increase in bio load. So just cleaned out both Aquaclear 110s. And let's see, temperature wise, I've been running the tank at 82.5. Um, Apex says it's at 83. Uh, and then the pH is at 6.54. Every day I do a 10 gallon water change from this display tank over to the quarantine tank. Not quite 10 gallons, it's like between 5 and 8. And then I refill this tank with um, RODI water and my hair grass seems to be coming back. So if that ends up doing well, I'll get another mat of that. And I think I'm going to add another air stone. I have one over here. I may try and put another one in the middle somewhere. Uh, but those are kind of my plans for 2015 for this tank. Um, equipment wise, I am good on this tank. The only thing I see myself adding are uh, one, I'll replace the bulb and the UV sterilizer. That's going to be due for a change this year. And then I'm going to add another, uh, I think it's the Nano 425 Corallia. Uh, I have two on this side. Nice reflection of the saltwater tank in the background. Um, I have two on this side, and uh, there's a small Nano in the back. That's on a timer. Um, I haven't been running it as much because I um, don't want to scare off the fish, but it does come on periodically, like once or twice a day. And then I'm going to get another one for this side, and I'm going to switch out that Fluval heater, which is the reason it's over there right now. It's 100 watt, and this one back here, let's see if you can see it, there it is one in the back. That one is 300 watt. I will be switching out the 100 watt heater for 200 watt and then this heater will actually go into my saltwater mix tank after giving it a wash with um, vinegar and drying it out. Kill off any bacteria that's on it um, and then washing it again in vinegar. And so I'll put this heater in the saltwater mixing tank and add a 200 watt heater, uh, replacing it, and that will be it. Those are the plans for the freshwater tank, and just keep up to date on my water changes and vacuuming the gravel.
another quick shot of wide shot of the tank, and then we'll pan back over to the saltwater tank. So this is the light on this tank. Again, is temporary. Up here, it is. Um, it's the planet. It's 6,500 k. Um, I only keep it on for an hour or so a day because I don't want a bunch of algae growing on the rocks and. Nice wide shot. Alright, very good. I'll leave the parameters for the saltwater tank down below in the description. And thank you for watching. Welcome new subscribers. And if you haven't already done so, please rate, com comment. Feedback is always welcome. And stay tuned for more updates.